Welcome to the forgotten history of Samuel Hart and his Wild West playing card empire. This is the third video in our series exploring the origins of America's early playing card makers, and today we're going to have a look into the life and work of an absolute legend. Of all the manufacturers to rise from the industry, Samuel Hart could easily be considered the most influential. He produced the rugged and iconic Pharaoh cards that traveled across the country during the gold rush, and he introduced many feature-rich gaming innovations throughout his career. Hart was the first U.S. card maker to develop and promote corner indices, and his Euchre decks were the first to include the Imperial Bower, the high card that would later become the Joker. Samuel Hart played close attention to the needs of gamers everywhere, and he was constantly looking for new ways to enhance his products to meet their demands. It's because of this unique relationship that much of his work is still visible today in any modern pack of cards. This brings us to the real question. Who was Samuel Hart? Samuel Hart was born on August 10, 1818, in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. During his youth, he became an apprentice at the local auction house of M. Thomas & Sons, but eventually took an interest in law and began employment at the offices of the Philadelphia County Court. There he rose to the position of Chief County Clerk. In 1841, the future called to Samuel when he married Julia Levy, the niece of New York stationer and playing card maker Ally Cohen. Within only three short years, Hart began a new life, started a family, and went into business with Julia's famous uncle. By 1844, he had entered the stationary trade and was operating Cohen's Philadelphia shop, located at 27 South 4th Street. There, Hart sold a vast selection of stationary goods, fancy imports, and of course, Cohen's ivory surface playing cards. Even though Samuel Hart was heavily associated with L.I. Cohen, it wasn't long before he began operating independently. In what would become a defining moment in American playing card history, Ally Cohen withdrew his interest from the Philadelphia store and turned it over to Samuel on September 3, 1845. Hart wasted no time in seizing this new opportunity and two weeks later partnered with Isaac Levy, and together they began looking for new products to add to the store shelves and new business ventures to embark on. You may be surprised to learn that the first cards to bear Samuel Hart's name were not playing cards at all. In the early years, Hart & Company was the publisher of Professor Punch's Musing Card Games and Pastimes, and although these beautiful games carry Hart's name, they were actually made for him locally. While Hart maintained the course of his newly expanded business, it wasn't long before another life-changing opportunity presented itself. In 1846, one of the largest playing card makers in the country was Thomas Crehor, located in Dorchester, Massachusetts. Crehor had produced cards since the beginning of the 19th century, but in November of 1846, his factory was destroyed in a fire, and he died one month later. In the aftermath, Samuel Hart and another young hopeful named Andrew Doherty became the unlikely benefactors when they secured a wealth of card-making machines, plates, and equipment from the estate. By 1849, and with plans to enter the playing card market in a serious way, Samuel Hart moved to 160 Market Street and renovated the space into his first steam-powered playing card factory. He also opened a store in New York City where he planned to sell his goods and playing cards. Just as Hart was getting his feet on the ground, something happened in America that would make his playing cards one of the most popular symbols in the country. The rise of Samuel Hart in the early American playing card industry was perfectly timed with the California Gold Rush and the following era of westward expansion. Because Pharaoh was America's pastime of choice, the game and Hart's cards were spread as far and as wide as the population itself. As the largest gateway to the West, New York City played a pivotal role in distributing people and playing cards into the country, and Hart's store frequently moved to meet the increasing demand. John Street, Barclay, and Broadway would all become home to Samuel Hart eventually, but before long he was looking for room to expand his manufacturing capabilities back in Philadelphia. In 1853, Hart found a building large enough to satisfy his needs and moved his operations to 236 South 13th Street, and it was there that he spent his entire independent career. The new factory wasn't just for making playing cards. Samuel Hart was also a substantial manufacturer of glass bottles and locking strong boxes. In retrospect, many items that Hart made were a perfect accompaniment to the spirit of a nation on the move. Although America's fascination with Pharaoh in the West would continue for over half a century, 
Old games were tended to and new games were added. During the years of the Civil War, poker saw a rise in popularity among the ranks of Union soldiers. Unlike Pharaoh and Euchre, poker was quick and easy to play and resonated quickly. Within only 10 years, it went on to become the second most popular game right next to Pharaoh. The difficult times of the Civil War brought material shortages and new taxes, but Samuel Hart's ingenuity was inspiring to say the least. Before the war, his gaming counters were manufactured out of metal, but the redirection of materials compelled him to use hardened rubber instead. This seemingly small change became an essential step on the path to modern poker chips. In fact, Samuel Hart is responsible for many key features of playing card history. Today we're all familiar with the Joker. It's become the most famous card in the deck. But you may be surprised to know that before the Civil War, there was no such thing. Samuel Hart changed that in approximately 1863 when he began to include a high trump card with his Euchre decks. With the rise of poker and a decade later, almost every deck made around the world contained a version of Hart's extra card. In 1864, Hart would change the card world forever when he introduced corner indices to the market with the release of his Saladis patent playing cards. Hart's new development allowed players to discreetly squeeze their cards apart to reveal their hands. He named and marketed the cards as squeezers, and they would become an American staple and brand for many years. From the lowest quality steamboats to the highest quality illuminated playing cards, Samuel Hart manufactured them all with his own unique style. When many others' careers would have ended with retirement, Samuel Hart started all over again with a massive second win. In 1871, Hart entered into a partnership with Lawrence and Cohen and John J. Levy and formed the New York Consolidated Card Company. Because Samuel Hart had the furthest reach into the national market, this made him critical to the early success of the NYCC. In 1875, the three businesses moved into a newly furnished factory located at 248 West 14th Street. Now, with all of their existing patents and trademarks under the same roof, this consolidation of power was set to move into the future and compete in an ever-growing and more aggressive market. While the story of the New York Consolidated Card Company will be told another time, it was there that Samuel Hart's playing card legacy was used and expanded on. While most of his business dealings were happening in New York, Samuel Hart continued to be a full-time resident of Philadelphia. The Hart family home was located at 1819 Chestnut Street, not far from his former playing card factory. As the years of prosperity for New York Consolidated marched forward, Samuel Hart slipped into semi-retirement during the early 1880s. At the end of May 1885, he was stricken by a chest infection and soon died at his Chestnut Street home on June 2nd. Samuel Hart was interned at the Mount Sinai Cemetery in Philadelphia. His inscription reads, A good son, a devoted husband, a loving father, a generous brother, a conscientious citizen, and a true friend. Even though Samuel Hart was gone, he was certainly not forgotten. Not by his family and not by the card-playing public that enjoyed his cards. His legacy lived on through the brands that held his name for another half a century. And today, his presence can still be felt by the private collectors who own the original playing cards he manufactured. Hart's star shone brighter than many in the night sky of the early playing card industry, and his influence and innovation never left. Every time you use a modern pack of cards, you're employing the standards and features developed by Hart more than 150 years ago. Thanks for joining me today and learning about the forgotten history of Samuel Hart and his Wild West playing card empire. There's a lot more to see and many more manufacturers to meet. But for now, I'm Jason McKinstry from the World of Paper Empires. See you next time.